you yeah. have more um, more more to share about university and why why particular yeah i have um mixed feelings on 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 people going to the university in general and, and reflecting on my own journey and um i do feel like university um i think um hmm, i really 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 enjoyed my time at university and i loved it um at the same time i do think sometimes perhaps it was completely unnecessary um I, th I think for most jobs, you do not need a university degree to do, to do the job. You'll learn that job on the job. Um, and, and a lot of the time, the, your academic background will have little to no impact on your ability to do a job. Um, obviously, um, specialised subjects, that's very different, like medicine and, and dentistry, etc. But... Um, so I have a love-hate relationship with university. I, I really loved it. Um, the academic side, um, sometimes I look back and I feel like I didn't really learn a great deal. And I remember at the end of each year thinking back and going, what did I actually learn this year? <laughs> um, and sometimes I would struggle with that. <laughs> um, and, and, and likewise, when I'm doing jobs that, uh, uh, doing jobs that I've done after university, I've, I've kind of thought and reflected and been like, what did I do at university that actually helps me with this current job? And a lot of the time what I found is it's not the academics at all. It was everything else. And so university is absolutely fantastic for personal development, as long as you are really proactive and choose to get involved in lots and lots of different things and follow your interests. If you just sit around, do your course, bit of socialising and then leave, you really haven't made the most of that opportunity. Um, so for me, I took part in a loads of different things. I was a course representative, telephone fundraiser, a student ambassador, a student expert panel member, a management consultant, project manager, green impact project assistant. Uh, I got involved with a couple of friends in developing a app prototype and a business plan for reducing uh, waste in small, medium enterprise small medium enterprises and so um those were all the things that really helped me develop as a person and gave me loads of those transferable uh, transferable skills for um life after university not necessarily the academic side however i wouldn't say look don't you know you need to study and <laughs> Make, make sure you are getting a reasonable grade. And for, for UK universities, I would say that's a 2-1. You do not need to worry about getting a first, a first class honours or anything like that. Just if you can, whilst doing everything else, great, do it. Go ahead, by all means. Um, you're probably cleverer than I am. But um, I would say focus a lot of your time and energy on those extracurricular things, get together with a few friends. And I think you might've done this as well. And, Absolutely. you know, and, and, and work on ideas, try and develop, um, you know, business plans or a set up some kind of society or something, you know, um, get involved in some competitions or just take advantage of all those opportunities that you're gonna, that you get at university because university brings so many people from all around the world, from all around the country, with all kinds of experiences and backgrounds. Take advantage of that, network with them, meet with them, um, share ideas, set up um, organisations and things like that, mm -hmm. because those are the things that will really benefit uh, you after university. Great. No, yeah. that's that's absolutely like a great overview of uh, what uh, things are there and what you should take uh, on them. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. But I want to actually emphasize the fact that we met during one of the um, basically events and you say yeah. and then after we met, we went to some conferences as well. So it's like it's something like. You know, it's a connection that we built and now we, we we talk and we share our ideas and stuff. So it's for me, it's very, very important. But I'm actually interested. I mean, now uh, maybe you could talk uh, what what are the 
ventures that you're involved in uh, and i know that uh, you're working uh, basically as i understood uh, in the uk government right or, or alongside some projects that it's uh, is there so basically you reached uh, a place uh, <laughs> where you wanted to be or how, how does it feel right now yeah it's great i mean i'm in um i'm definitely in an area that i want to be in right now so um I'm currently working on the UN Climate Change Conference COP26, which we're hosting this year. Um, every year, um, I think most people have heard of the Paris Agreement. Um, so that was a COP, a conference of the parties. And every year you have a conference of the parties in a different host country. So this year we're hosting it. Um, so I'm involved in that and we're doing this sort of international engagement um, side of things. So speaking to lots of different countries around the world, trying to increase their climate ambition increase their nationally determined contributions. And um, yeah, so that's what we're involved in at the moment. So I work for the UK government, the cabinet office, um, and that's a really great place to be. Um, and I think, yeah, I don't know. I think the university experience has been, was really useful, but, but I think, like I was saying before, I think I, you, do, you don't really, I didn't really need any of that for, for my current job. <laughs> Um, which is why it's a love-hate relationship with the university. But yeah, um, so currently working in the government, it's really, really good. Um, I think um, I am still quite interested in getting some more private sector exposure later on in my career as well, um, because I think when I was talking about my interest in politics, economics and science um, before at university, I think, I think that still stands for me right now in working life. Um, so I want to I want to sort of work in government for for a number of years and understand uh, from the inside how decisions are made, how the environment factors into that. Is it really high up? Is there more? Are there other factors that influence policy making much more so? And how can you actually um, increase um, sort of raise the environment on that agenda? Um, so I want to understand that, how government operates and what are the different levers and factors involved in, in, in pushing the environment up on that agenda. Likewise, I still really want to find out more from the inside of the private sector and how that, you know, the exact same thing and same on the international arena. So um, I don't have a fixed plan of, let's say, I want to do... Um, uh, <laughs> this specific job and then the next specific job and then you know so um, there is a broad plan um, the order of that plan completely flexible the mm -hmm. the way it pans out completely flexible it might not happen it might you know you can't ever be too rigid but I would like to still get that private sector exposure that international exposure um, as well as what I'm doing right now which is obviously getting that um, UK government exposure Great, great. I mean, um, just to go back to the story, maybe a little bit in the beginning, how hard was it to find a job in government in the, in the UK? I mean, was it um, easy with the degree or wouldn't, wouldn't, I mean, isn't it that the thing that you get the education and then you get the, the jobs uh, and it's just kind of like, a, I mean, one of the things that without it, you wouldn't be able. Do you think that was the case or... Uh, it was it was something else for you because for me I I did have uh, this important part of me of my uh, kind of uh, the way that they decided to take me in the job it was yeah my university so was it the same for you? No, um, and things are changing for the better with regards to that. I don't think it's necessary for. Obviously, there's a lot of industries that still do require and specific jobs which will require university education. And, and that's getting, and for those that do do that, it's getting worse because the value of a bachelor's degree or an undergraduate degree is now nothing. Um, and the minimum standard is basically either a master's, sometimes a PhD, um, for those jobs that still put a heavy emphasis on having that academic foundation. Um, and a lot of the time, you don't need it again, like I said. <laughs> It's so bad. It's just a way of filtering people, but not for good reasons. So anyway, the government, and I'm, I'm glad that it's happened, but they're, they're starting to do now blind applications where you, you do not mention which university you went to. That way you can avoid that whole elitist sort of thing of, oh, I went to Oxford and Cambridge, right, we'll take you, obviously, definitely, thank you. Uh, oh, I went to Keele University, no. <laughs> we don't want you. So 
that's that that sort of the day and age of that kind of elitism is is hopefully starting to fade away and and that requirement of a university educational and even worse specific universities and specific courses um so for me no i didn't need i don't think i needed a degree i didn't i don't think i needed um i don't even need to mention that i went to a russell group university which is obviously in the uk a group of universities which are, um have a good reputation mm -hmm. but um um so that's a good thing and and i think um if you had done an apprenticeship you would be just as just as easily you'd be able to get the job um it's all about and I'm for, and this is the other thing that really frustrates and it frustrates, frustrates me and a lot of other young people is graduate schemes and 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 oh man i don't even i I almost don't even want to talk about it because it just gets, it's so frustrating. Yes. Um, but the, Let's not make the, it frustrated the, right now. <laughs> oh man. It, so I remember applying for some jobs where um, a, a physical human being will not even review your application. You'll put hours into online games and tests, filling out long application forms, doing personal statements and, things like this and a human being will not even see it will never see it a computer will go through it filter it by keywords and um whatever that, that computer is configured to to look for and um your results based on various tests and things like that mm. and it will just bin you. It, will, it will bin you if you haven't met a certain threshold um, and that is decided by a computer an algorithm not even a real human being I mean, this is the 21st century, so I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> if this, uh, to come, it's not it's not good at all. Um, so I feel sorry for people going through that whole process. I, I I know a lot of people who have spreadsheets where they've got down hundred they because they've applied for hundreds of jobs after university, color coordinated coordinated spreadsheets and rejection after rejection after rejection like it's so bad for people's self-esteem and mental health and uh um, mm. i was very fortunate i applied for uh i'd say a handful of private sector jobs um but i during university i did an internship with the government for the department mm -hmm. of environment food and rural affairs interestingly working on brexit um <laughs> We, we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm silent on this topic. <laughs> um, but interesting. Well, it, it was working on, it was actually quite an interesting area. So it was actually looking at um, the impacts of Brexit on seafood trade and fisheries, which is quite an interesting area to be in. I learned a lot. Um, but anyway, because I'd done that internship, it meant that I was eligible for... Um, a fast track, like a, a, a pass, like a fast track pass onto an assessment center, which then in turn put me onto a scheme, which then made me eligible for a job wow. after university. Um, it took a very long time to actually get through that whole process. Um, mm -hmm. But after graduating, it still took um, a further year until I actually got a job or, or, or a, the government job. I did other things in between yeah. um, mm -hmm. holding it over, but but yes, I was quite fortunate in that I didn't have to go through that excruciating process that so many other graduates went through of applying for hundreds of jobs and just being rejected and rejected and rejected. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I haven't spoken to uh, actually someone who had this kind of experience because a lot of my friends actually did internships in uh, in university and thank god they did them because uh i feel like i see them very happy with what they're doing yeah. and so what you just described about graduate schemes um and thank god i didn't actually choose it as well <laughs> no <laughs> but yeah it seems Wow, it seems interesting. Okay, right. So, I mean, uh, what I wanted to ask finally, actually, maybe this is something that you said you want to touch upon, like maybe uh, what uh, education advice would you give to your teenage self and let's say more into um, what are the reasons why you chose university 
in any case, like you said, you know, uh, to maybe dwell upon the pros and cons in a way, uh, or maybe just draw some main points of what education advice would you give uh, to young people? Hmm. Um, I think the first thing is I wouldn't start with education. Uh, <laughs> just ruined your whole question there, but no. Um, <laughs> The, fir the first thing to think about is where you want to be. And it's a very difficult thing to do, but think about the future you want for yourself. Um, uh, forget the whole academics thing for the time being. Just think about uh, where you want to be. Um, it can be difficult. Um, do you want to be like, think about it more broadly. Do you want to be kind of helping people? Do you want to be doing, you know, working internationally? Do you want to be living internationally? Do you want to live some, in a different country? Things like that. Start thinking about those kind of things. And then um, do you want to be working in government or things like that? And then work backwards and then work backwards. So um, one of the things I did when I was younger is um, think about those things that I want to do. Look at positions of people that are in careers and jobs that I aspire to be in and then look how they got there so LinkedIn is a great tool for that just have a look on LinkedIn at certain people like I don't know let's say the Prime Minister of Estonia is uh, I don't know an inspirational figure to you and something you aspire to be great well have a look at um, uh, the Prime Minister's sort of uh, background and route to getting into that office and um, look at which institutions did he go to when he was younger or she go to when they were younger. Um, same for a business leader. Maybe there's a particular business like a, in a cosmetics or, a, or, or um, legal industry or so, anything just um, and working backwards. How did they get there? Which um, internships did they do? Which companies did they go to? Which uh, degrees did they do? Um, and sometimes that can be quite useful for thinking about what you need to do in order to get there so you might realize well um okay so i'm quite interested in the healthcare space and all of the ceos of these major healthcare companies have done degrees in x subject okay great so i'm still at school and i've realized okay i need to do i need to do the sort of subjects that will put me in a position to be able to apply for x degree um, and then so you're working backwards and then you can figure out, OK, you now you know which subjects you need to do, which are the universities that seem to propel people into those kind of careers and jobs. So you can start thinking about, OK, now I know um, what subjects, which types of universities, which countries maybe they studied in. Um, and so you're kind of working backwards from and then and then and then focusing on how you can get to those places and, and getting to those internships degrees universities countries um yeah. but but then alongside that the other thing as i mentioned before is don't focus too much on the academics um sometimes i was stressing so much about the grades and 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 i and I, I didn't need to um because uh the things that really have helped me are, are not the academics at all so um focus on those um, areas of personal development and those extracurricular activities you can get involved in whilst you're at school, outside of school. Uh, and then once you go to university, if you choose to go to university, because if you can do an apprenticeship, um, which offers a good package, you can get a degree during the apprenticeship, perhaps a, good, a reasonable salary, training on the job. Why bother going to university and getting yourself into so much debt? when you can just as equally do an, uh, an apprenticeship where you're getting paid and a degree and all of that experience, networking experience. So um, university is not the be all and end all. Um, it's not something you need to do in order to get to where you want to be. Um, and that's the other thing, which is, so if you are looking at those routes backwards, it's very likely that the people that you aspire to be in future have done degrees and gone to university. Things are changing now. Um, so you don't have to follow that path strictly, but it is useful um, to have a look at. Um, so if you can find apprenticeships or even just going straight into the workplace, um, then then do it if if it's the right thing for you. That you feel like it could be right. I mean, 
it's hard decision in my opinion now that we have been through the whole thing right and uh, we can think about it but uh, I still I do still support young people who say all right I don't really want to go to university and I say to them wow great if you really feel like it's do it um it's just that um uh, you know it's for us we have the advantages we, we have been through it so we know how it feels and how it is so but yeah things are changing uh, definitely and that's why i have asked this question now in this new season should it be education or should it be like other things you know involved and um i i'm I'm really, really grateful that you joined because it was such an amazing conversation and so many insights. And I, I'm really, really glad to share with the world. <laughs> and thank you so much, really. It was amazing. <laughs> no worries at all. Happy to, happy to be here and do this.